Chapter 7 The Prayer of the Lord But many who were on the mountain and had heard this order of mine began to wonder. Helena and Uran also wondered a little and immediately asked with many others, saying, Strange! Now he is going to pray, and to prepare himself for tomorrow. Whom can he invoke? And to whom can he pray? Is he then, despite his deepest wisdom, perhaps not the supreme divinity? He is not going to pray to himself, is he? And if he did, one could very well ask, What's the use of that? Strange. He goes to pray and prepare himself for tomorrow, as if he, as the highest divinity, has not been very well prepared since the beginning of eternity. Strange. Strange. Hmm. 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 What is that supposed to mean? Before he spoke as only a true God alone can speak. It depends on the slightest breath of his will whether the world exists or not. And now, he is going to pray himself, bids us to sleep and rest, or to pray as well, and prepare ourselves for the morrow. Well, if he himself goes to pray to some divinity known certainly only to him, Who should we pray to then? To him? Or the divinity that is completely unknown to us, to whom he is praying? No, that is even more than what one could dream in a most silly dream. Here Mathal suddenly gets up, somewhat worked up and says in a loud voice, so that many can hear it. Why are you judging here like the blind about colours? Oh, you blind, all of you that are here, with the exception of the angel Raphael and you, his oldest disciples, who are also very blind and thus foolish. Doesn't he wear flesh and blood on this earth? just like all of us, out of which his soul evolved like ours in order to be capable of entering into a full bond with the eternal divine spirit? Only the spirit in him is God. Everything else is human, as we are humans. When he prays, then that means, in other words, he lets his being be completely penetrated by his eternal Spirit of God, from which all other spirits come. Just as the small image of the sun in a drop of dew originates from the real sun. According to his spirit, he is the real son. But we and all spirits are only living images of this eternal, original, primal son, God. Do you now understand what it means if he says that he is praying?
Jarrah and Helena understood it first. But the others could still not fully align themselves because they were still putting soul and spirit together in the same basket. But then Mathal began to teach them properly and then many caught on. But everyone praised the truly deepest wisdom of the intrepid Mathal, and Helena grabbed Mathal's hand, pressed it to her bosom, and said, Yes, my very most magnificent and God-given husband. If your wisdom constantly progresses so magnificently, then I would like to know how strong I will love you in the end. If you had not come to all our aid with your wisdom, in the end, we would have begun to doubt the divinity of the great master. Apart from all the never heard of most wonderful deeds performed by him before our eyes. But now everything is in the best order again. And we all now know very well to whom we should pray and call on in fullest trust. Cyrenius says, As much as I am happy to see you, my dear friend and brother Matthael, positioned as well as possible, I would have been even happier to have you constantly at my side. For there is no one among us, with the exception of the angel, who is now talking to Sueto, who is as entirely enlightened in all things as you. How blessed is a nation whose regent you will be. And actually, you are already in your character. But nonetheless, we will see each other often, for either I will come to you, or you will come to me. Mathael seizes old and venerable Cyrenius's hands and says, Most noble Cyrenius, we will work hand in hand, and let it be our principle to make the nation as wise and happy as possible in the name of the Lord. It is true, we will constantly direct our attention mainly to the spiritual well-being of the nation entrusted to us by God for leadership. But also, in the natural respect, no one should have to complain about any pressing need, particularly if he is spiritually in good order. In the great Roman Empire, such a people's leadership would no doubt have a lot of difficulties to battle. But in a small country, it is very easy to implement. And happy little states then usually become a mirror in which the great ones check to see whether they have any dirt on their faces or whether their hair is in order. A mirror is usually only as large as the palm of a hand and yet a person, if he wants, can look gradually from the head to the tip of a toe Thus, a small land can easily become a mirror for a very great kingdom. But if a small land wanted to take a great kingdom as their model, it would thereby very much decline, and all its subjects would fall into the greatest ruin. Thus, we prefer to be a small mirror than a giant that looks into. Am I right or not, High Cyrenius? Cyrenius says, I would only like to know him who would say you were wrong. You are always correct, for out of you speak forth the awakened spirit of God. But just look at the city. The fire seems to be stronger and stronger. In the end, will this important city burn down? Our Raphael could surely help there if he was worried about it. <laughs>